Welcome back to Nuno Solutions, guys. I'm Nuno, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can create an edit employee window. Let me just run the application. We're going to be able to double click on the grid. Let me just get employees. We're going to be able to pick one of these employees, double click on it, and it's going to open up an edit window. And we're also going to be able to cycle through each one of these directly from the edit employee window. So let's just go ahead and do that. Right click your solution explorer, click add, click new window. We'll do a new item. And then in this new item, you're going to want to pick WPF on the left side and you're going to want to pick a new window. We're going to name this window edit employee and then click add. And now we have a basic window. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to switch down to the XAML. Instead of using the design surface like I did before, I'm actually going to create this code directly from the XAML side. So we're going to have to create a grid uh, row definition in here. So we could add our rows. And we're also going to have to create a grid dot column definition as well. We're going to have in, the, in this specific instance, we're actually going to create two rows. Uh, the first row is going to be height of, let's say, 140. Copy this and create another row. This next, next row is going to be just 50. Oh, one other thing. Let's change the uh, title here to just put a space here. Edit employees. This, this is the title attribute of the window. You're going to make sure you change that correctly. Let me just save this. Now for the columns, I'm going to scroll down. Let's, let's define some column definitions. And for, we're going to set a width for the first column of 50. Copy that, paste it. We're going to set the second column to a width of 150. And uh, let's just save that. And I'll so actually, if you go into the designer, you, see, you can see these blue lines going across and, and going down and across. This is basically the column. So you see we have one column here, two columns here. So it's two columns. And then we have one row and then another row. That's what this basically means. So here, if you see the row definition is 140 and for the first one and then 50 for the second one. So the first row you can see is 140. You can see it right here. And the second row is 50. And then for the column definition, we the first column is 50 and then the second column is 150. So you can see here, the first column, which is this one is 50. And then the second column, which is this one is 150. All right, good. So let's go uh, one other thing here. Let's just, we're going to have to change the uh, size of this specific window. We're going to make the width 400 and we're going to make the height, let's just make it 285. Let's save that. Let's, let's zoom in here back to 100. This is what it looks like actually. Let's go back into the XAML and start adding our GUI controls. So of course you could go into the toolbox and drag and drop the controls that you want. In this case, I'm actually going to add some of the controls manually. So we're going to add a label at the top of the window. We're going to want to show an edit. Let me just pull up um, the application that's already pre-made and I'll just show you what, what the window has to look like. So we want the window to kind of look like this, right? So at the top, we want to add an edit employee label that kind of looks like that. So to do that, I'm going to set the content of this label, which is basically the text property or the text, the, the text that you see to edit employee. And in XAML, there's some very important properties called horizontal alignment that allows you to set a control to, to either the left or the right. I'll just type it in here, horizontal alignment. And this one, we're going to want it to align left. Now I'll show you what that does in a moment. And we're going to set the font size of this specific label to, let's do 20 pixels. And we're going to want to put this in grid column, grid column zero, but we're going to want this grid to column span two columns. And then we're going to make the width of this specific, uh, let's just make it about 150 and uh, we'll adjust if we need to. Let's just go into the designer. Let's just save this. There we go. Actually, I'm going to pull this up like that. That way we can see as we code it, we can see it appear on the screen. And I'll just move this up a little bit. The only thing I see here, I want to make this bold. So to make this bold, we're going to uh, set a font weight. And we're going to say font, font weight, and it equals bold. All right, so now we got to add the, the, the labels and the inputs. So to save time, I'm just going to paste that in here. You can see here it's a label and a text box. Label, text box, label, text box. And if you look here, you can see what they look like here. Label, text box, label, text box, label. You know, this is the MPID name, email, and phone. I'm going to pull this up uh, again. So uh, let me show you what I meant. We're going to work with this edit employee label. So that's this one here. If I move this to the right, watch this. And now like it basically pulls the label to the direction of whatever you set your horizontal alignment to. So if I pull it to the left and now it appears to the left, there's also a vertical alignment in here, vertical alignment. By the right, right now it's set the top, but I'm going to set this. If you see here, there's bottom, center, stretch, or top. I'm going to set this to bottom. And now if I scroll down to the bottom, you see that it, it moved down to the bottom. 
And it's moving down to the bottom. If you notice, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the window. It's actually, let me just, so I can show this a little bit better. The interesting thing is that it's actually going to the bottom of the first row because it, it's putting this label in the first row. And the first row is 140 pixels. So it basically brings it down to the, the 140 pixel mark. So we're going to set this back to the top. That's where we want it. Okay, so now we have an edit employee screen. We also have to add buttons. So let's do that. We're going to add that to the second row. And so let's go down to the bottom here. And we're going to add a button. We're going to name this BTN save employee. And the grid row that we want to place this in is in grid row one, which really it's in, it's zero base. So it's row zero is really row one and row one is really row two. So this is really row two. And we're going to put this in the grid column one, which is the second column. And we're going to horizontal align this to the right because we want this to appear on the right towards the right side of the window, right? The bottom right. Uh, let's just set the content of this button to save. We're also going to, um, for now, let's just do that and see what it looks like. You'll see here, like, the, you can see the button in the designers, like, all the way to the right side. There's no margin. It just looks kind of funny. So let's just add a margin attribute in here. And what we're going to do, so to make this look proper, we're going to say the left side has a zero margin, comma, the top side, zero. The left side, we're going to say 95 to zero. You'll see it actually moves. We have to set a width proper. So let's just set a width of 75. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's good. The other thing I don't like is the height. We're going to set a height of 25. There we go. And now if, if I scroll up a little bit, you can see it looks more, more normal. We're going to put another button right here on the side. It's going to be a, a cancel button. So what we can do is literally copy this, this XAML, this XML, and we're going to copy and paste it right underneath it. We're going to change the name of the button to BTN cancel. We're going to change the content to cancel. And now they're overlapping each other. So this cancel button, we're actually going to reduce the margin to let's just make it like, I don't know, because right now the horizontal alignment is to the right, right? So it's it, it, it's trying to pull it to the right. So let's say if this margin here, that's 95 was zero, it'd be all the way to the, the edge. Let's do that. You see what I'm saying? It pulls it all the way to the edge. That's not good though. Let's, let's add at least a 10 pixel margin there. So that looks good. We have two more buttons where we have to add. So I'm actually going to... Um, and actually, I'm going to put them in, in the order that they appear in here because because these would appear first. So I'm going to actually move these down. I'm going to paste another button here. This one is going to be the previous button. So I'm going to name it to BTN previous. And I'm just going to uh, change the content to PREV. And now the horizontal alignment, I'm actually going to set this to the left. And it's to the left of the second column, but I really want this to be in the first column. That's zero. You see what I mean? And then we're also going to set a, like for this, we're going to set a margin, right? Of Let's just use a margin of 10 and we could get rid of this margin. And uh, I think the width should be a little smaller. Let's do 50 feet maybe. Okay, yeah, 50. Now let's add another button right next to it, which should be BTN. And we're going to say next. We're going to change the content to next. And I'm going to change the margin to 70, the left, the left margin to 70. But you see how it's getting cut off? It's because it's in column um, zero. So to like fix this issue, you're going to make the grid column span. And we're going to make it span both columns. You see what I'm saying? So like this specific control could appear anywhere on these two columns using if, as long as we change the margin. So like if I set this to 100 and 70, you see how it moves to wherever I want it to appear. And it doesn't get cut off using the column. So there we go. So now let's save this and uh, we can kind of collapse this and see what our, our window kind of looks like. It's not too bad. I think this is what we want. So let's, let's do this. Let's go back into the main window where we want to make it so that in the grid, when we double click the grid, uh, it, it'll open up this edit window, edit employee window, but we also got to pass the object, the employee object that's in the, on the row we click. We want to pass it into the edit employee. So I'm just going to grab this data grid here. I'm just going to move it down to the bottom here so we can see it easily. If I run this, it should run successfully without a problem, right? If I get employees, we should get employees. That's what we did in the last video. But if we double click on this, and I don't know if you notice, it's like, it's like it lets you edit, which is, you know, not what we want. So let's, we got to make number one, this, this grid, we're going to make it read only. That's going to be the first thing we're going to do. And also, um, it has this empty row at the bottom here. This is so if you want to add a new row, we also want to disable that. So let's do that first. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say is read only equals true. And then the next thing we're going to do is can user add rows. We can also set that to false, run it. Now we get the empty row that's gone. If you double click on it, it doesn't go into edit mode. Perfect. 